A wooden cross marks the spot where, 65 years ago, something terrible happened. I'm in Dobronin, in the Czech Republic. My guide is the journalist Miroslav Maresz. In the summer, 15 bodies were found here. Miroslav Maresz interviewed locals and went through archives. His research led him to this field, where witnesses say local Czechs killed ethnic Germans after the Second World War. Maresz tells me that excavations began here on August the 16th. There was a digger, and they began work on this spot. There were police on either side. They found the first bones here, Maresh says. He tells of the surprise everyone felt. They'd only been digging a short time before the first bones turned up. It's not something I know much about, the crimes committed by Czechs against ethnic Germans after the war. In those months, three million Germans fled the areas they lived in, mainly in Bohemia, Moravia and Silesia. After the atrocities of the Nazi period, much anger was vented on them. The discovery of the mass grave in Dobrunin has stoked emotions in the village. Miroslav Maresz introduces me to Milan Litovsky, the man who erected the cross despite local opposition. He tells me that he used to come here as a child, even though the adults had forbidden it. They said something bad happened here, but they wouldn't say what. When the bones were unearthed this summer, and it was clear that people had been murdered here, Litovsky says he wanted to commemorate that fact. He saw the cross as a symbol of Christian reconciliation. The cross has already been vandalized once. Most of the Germans who lived around here believed in the Nazi cause. Milan Litovsky is fully aware of that. But he insists that doesn't justify the murders that happened here. <laughs> he says when Czech media picked up on Dobronin and the story of the mass grave, the village mayor wanted to hush everything up. But Litovsky felt that made the cross all the more necessary. He wanted to show people how brutal history can be and that the murders did happen. Litovsky grew up in this village. He has no familial or personal connections to Germany. What do the other residents of Dobrunin make of his actions and the murders committed here? This man says he wasn't born at the time and doesn't really know what happened. But if people were murdered, he thinks the cross is only right. It's a normal consequence of war, says this man. These things happen after wars. This woman doesn't care whether the victims were Czech or German. If they were killed, they should be remembered. Some locals, though, would rather not talk to me at all. This man waves me away. But then he does add, why don't you think about what the Germans did here instead? In many ways, I can understand his anger. That afternoon, I head to the nearby town of Jichlava, or Iglau, as it was once known in German. Only a few of the town's ethnic Germans weren't driven out after the war. I find one of those who stayed. 80-year-old Marianne Schmidt. Her father was a German, her mother Czech. 
After 1945, she remained here with her mother. She had a Czech passport, but everyone here referred to her as the German. She explains how the Czech children were taught by their parents to beat up German children. They said the Germans had no right to do this and that. But Mariana told them, no, we're human beings, just like you. Mariana Schmidt has never felt at ease with the Czechs, though she's lived here since the war. She focuses on the crimes they committed, the scorn poured on her. She knows about the Nazi atrocities, but says the Czechs did so much too. I realize she may never reach forgiveness. I travel on to the capital, Prague. I have an appointment at these offices. Uh, hello, this is Linda Fierke. Anti-Complex is a non-profit organization founded by Andre Mateka, a Czech who grew up in the Sudeten region, where many ethnic Germans once lived. The group focuses on the difficult aspects of Czech-German relations, organizing readings and discussions on shared history, and publishing books with testimony from those who lived through the 1930s and 1940s. Mateka rejects the approach taken by the communists, simply to wipe out 800 years of German history in the region. He promotes a different understanding. He tells me that today, the best way forward is to admit that what happened after the war was problematic. It was perhaps necessary, as the war may have made it impossible for Czechs and Germans to live side by side. There's no way of knowing, he says. But he insists that forcing out the Germans was a loss to the region and the nation. He says to live here, people must build on the history they have. Today, it is young Czechs like Andrei Mateka who are advancing the historical debate without relativizing the atrocities of the Germans. As part of that debate, some have unpleasant truths to tell. One of those doing that is David Vondracek. Over the summer, Czech television broadcast his documentary called Killing the Czech Way. It looks at the crimes committed by the Czechs against Germans. In particular, it was the scene showing summary executions that provoked controversy. Vondracek tells me he was surprised at the impact of his film. There was a huge public reaction. He says it was presumably the first time many had seen images like these. They might have read about these things in papers or books, but his film really touched people, in particular younger generations. They are the ones asking questions, he says, and some are wondering whether there were massacres in their own backyards. Bondracek says there are still many mass graves to be found in the Czech Republic. He's working on a new film about the issue now. The debate about the aftermath of the war has moved a long way in recent years. For the first time, Czechs are speaking of their own guilt. As I've seen, it's a subject that still takes courage to speak about.